Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we have a special video that we're doing. I'm going to show you guys how I do a real color correction. Now, color corrections have a big, broad term and can be many different things. As long as you're changing something in the hair, making it something totally different, it's considered a color correction. Now with me, I always prefer to do foil work and do full baby lights. If somebody wants to be blonde, I'll take them from black to blonde in several sessions and do it that kind of way. But I also offer a way of a color correction that I have on my menu. And this entails $100 an hour, and we go in and do multiple steps. It could be an eight hour day, it could be a 10 hour day, it could be a 12 hour day. Today, she has a whole bunch of box dye. She's been using it forever. Her hair feels a lot better than I thought it was going to feel. Her mom, her dad, and her grandmother are all my clients, and I knew her for a while. So we're all like family friends. And today we're gonna use a color remover that I have not used on my channel before. I never used any color remover on here. And it's Scruples Color Delete. This allows us to go in and actually remove a lot of the heavy lifting without using bleach and it's safer on the hair. That will wipe the slate clean and then I'm gonna blow dry her after I shampoo and condition and do a treatment. Then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna do a full baby light highlight with a paint between so we can cancel out any left out orange in the between the foils. So if you wanna see this huge color correction, then keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back. Grab your drink and snacks along with your notepads because this is going to be a good one. We'll be doing a permanent hair color remover and I've never done this before on my channel ever. Let's get into it. All right guys, this kind of looks like baby formula. This is Scruples Delete. It's the color remover. I'm gonna do, we'll start out with one scoop. We can always remix. And I think it's one to three. I'm actually gonna measure, you know, with bleach, I like to do off consistency. But you're allowed to leave this on for up to an hour without heat. You can use 10, 20, or 30 volume with it. I'm gonna go with 20, you guys know me. And I'm gonna do one, two, three. So that was 20 grams. I'm gonna go up to 80 grams. Maybe a little over, it's fine. And I wanna see how this consistency plays out. I've used scruples a couple times before. I use it on my own hair. I like it. I think it gets in there and does a lot of the heavy lifting by keeping the hair still very, very healthy. And then we can go and bleach after. Stay tuned, guys. I'm gonna go to apply this right now to her hair. And this is the consistency I'm working with. Just like my, like my bleach. Same kind of consistency. All right, let's do this. Okay, so Scruples directions for this remover are very specific, just like any other product. It is a permanent hair color remover. It can shift the base if it's virgin hair, so if you don't want to change the natural virgin hair, avoid touching it. They require one part product to three parts developer, which is good because you get more product. Or you have the second option of instead of using developer, using cold tap water. I did 20 volume and that is what they strongly recommend. They also want you to make sure it's mixed thoroughly and you process without heat. They say to use a processing cap, but I prefer foil work and figured that heat from the foil would help my case and it will help me get a little bit more lift in there because she had tons of overlapping, so I need all the help I can get. Now, I know a lot of you colorists are baffled as well as regular clients because of the cold tap water option. However, developer is just basically water to begin with, but lightener AKA bleach is what has the lift. That's why bleach says nine levels of lift, seven levels of lift. Bleach without developer and just water will still work. It might take forever, but it will still lift. A lot of people think that the lift is in the developer and it's the opposite. The lift is in the bleach or in this case, the color remover. Developer is just the speed. Example, if you use seven volume on the two back sections and 20 on the front two, eventually it will even out. Reason I prefer to use 20 all over and let everything sit a little longer is because 30 and 40 volume will still blast fast and cause a wee bit more damage. All right, guys, so we just finished applying the Scruples Color Delete. This is the last section I just did. I did the back first, and you can see it's lifting right up here. Look at that straight orange. I don't even think it's picking up how bright it is on the camera. And as we go down, it's starting to lift. You can see up at the top, we're going to have better lift, and there's going to be banding further down because as her hair got longer, she's done more to the hair that's lower down. So this is going to be a little bit more resistant than up here. You can see up here is lightening beautifully. We're about a level of six right now. And then down here, we're going to a more like a five, maybe a four. 
So we're gonna let it sit for a while. I have a little bit left to apply. I used three bowls. She had a lot of hair. And I'm gonna let her process and we're gonna watch it and let it cook. I'm gonna set my timer for like 30 minutes and then check it after that. All right guys, stay tuned. All right guys, so now she's done processing. From the Scruples Delete, we let her sit for about 40 minutes. Now I'm gonna go in and do a bleach wash to see if we can kick the cuticle open a little bit more. And I have this Kenra Lightener that I used the other day for the first time, and it's powerful. So I'm gonna use this with 20 volume and some shampoo for a bleach wash. I don't wanna do anything too high. Just to pop the cuticle open a little bit more before we go in and do our full baby light. Alright guys, Scruples Delete is done, Bleach Wash is done, she's rough dried, all we did was use Olaplex Shampoo number 4 and Conditioner number 5, and a heat protectant, and look from rough drying her. Look at that shine, seriously. Her hair feels better now than it did when she came in. Now we're going to go in and do the foiling. Alright guys, so we're rounding out to almost being done with her foils. You can see how red and orange she really did lift. I'm continuing doing baby lights. And working my way up on a diagonal. What I like to do a lot is back here, I get a lot of clients who complain of dark holes. You know, you ever hear your clients say, I hate when my hair blows and the way my hair splits, I get a dark hole. No matter when I get my hair done, I just got it boiled, it always looks like it's dark anyway when the wind blows. So what I like to do in this crown area is really pack foils in. So what I do is I'll go diagonally on a slight diagonal from the left to the right, and then I do this upside down triangle part. Sometimes I'll do horizontal like this, but when I really want to make sure it's very, very beautiful and falls beautifully and blended and pack them in, you can see how small my sections are. 
I go in, I do my baby line, very close stitch. Grab my foil. And look how beautiful that baby lay is. But it's going off on a slant. I go up with my product. Another thing I always do is I go all the way up to the ridge of the foil. As long as you are not taking a big, huge blob of bleach and putting it right up to the root, you should have no swelling or tiger stripe issues. I go and lock my foil. It's also easier to leave a clip like this, so you can just take the hair down and put it back up. So I'm going to take another section, a little bit bigger than that. And remember, I tell people all the time, you can make whatever look you want by your subsection. So just because I'm going in and I'm not doing up and down regular stitch like most people do up and down, that would give us a regular traditional chunkier highlight. Some people want a chunky highlight, they'll go in and do like this. I don't ever do that, but if somebody does want more dimension and a regular stitch, I'll go in and I'll just go up and down like that, and it will give me a closer together stitch, but it's still dimensional. For my baby lights, I like to go in, I always stay right at the scalp, and what I do is I keep it up at the scalp here, and it's almost like pulling it towards me, and I go in, out, in, out, in, out. You could do it that way, or you could do it even closer and spin them, where I'm actually spinning the comb. And when I pull out, it's still going to give me a stitch, but look how much closer this stitch is and finer. And that's my style. It's finer, almost like a slice, um, natural lived-in looks. I don't like chunky at all, and most of my clientele don't either. They love my baby lights. I do them in a different way. I learned between Hair by Chrissy and Jessie Gish, I just mix a little of both of theirs together. You know, always make everything your own, and this is what I love doing ever since. So I'm gonna continue going through and pounding these foils out. We're almost nearing the end, and now I'm gonna make after this, when everything's in, a paint between color. I'm gonna make a certain concoction. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but we're gonna counteract this in between color, because if I was to leave this orange out, it would look too, too brassy. We need to counteract that. Um, and that will help make more of a, um, a nice dimension, but it will also fade in the background. Back to what I was saying real quick before I forget. You make your stitches and your looks that you create by the amount of subsection. So just because I'm doing a baby light doesn't mean that I can't have a dimensional look. If I pack my foils in back to back like I'm doing now, because you want to kick as much of that color out as possible, or if I'm doing a solid more kind of look like a blonde who wants to be solid, I'll leave minimal subsections, which means minimal amounts of hair, in between each foil, which would be this part. And this is what is going to be left out, but it's still very small, minimal. If I wanted to go in and have a more dimensional look, I could go in and go like this. Still staying up against and just scraping a small minimum amount of hair, but I'm leaving more of a subsection out that will give us more of a dimensional look. It all goes by the subsection size. Don't think I want to have more dimension that you have to go in and take this whole thing and just go in and weave it. And then you're going to be taking too much hair into the foil and it's not going to process evenly and it's going to be splotchy and take forever to process. You always want to have the same amount of hair, very small, in the foil so that it processes beautifully. And if you want to do a certain look or more dimensional, just make sure you leave out um, a bigger subsection. I hope that makes sense, guys. Let me know down below if it doesn't, and I'll help you understand it further. I think I should do a video on this, actual little tips and tricks on foiling and how to keep it tight and speed up your timing because I do a lot of foils. You guys know that if you follow me or have been supporting me for a while, you'll notice I do a lot of foils. There's probably at least 200 in her head. I gotten fast over the last two years because I've only graduated school two years ago and I got a lot faster over time. And I tell everybody it takes time to get quicker. It's not gonna happen overnight. When everybody was in school taking a break, I was taking out my mannequin and doing a full head of foils. I love foiling. It's the only time my brain is actually calm and quiet and I could just whip these foils out. Um, I know her, obviously, so I'm not going in crazy like a real client. 
and doing a million miles an hour. We were actually talking and stuff and um, whatnot. But if I needed to, I could really speed up and probably do a full head by myself of a full baby light in about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. All right, guys, I'm gonna let you guys get ready to see me mixing my in-between color. And then once we do that and I paint that in between all the dropouts, we are going to let her process. I'm gonna check the front since I started in the front. And if I need to, I will water bottle those foils out. Healthy hair is the way to go. I have mentioned in a previous video of mine, if you haven't seen it, I'll mention it again, that a trick of mine when using Shades EQ for an all over color or a low light, since I have been using it a lot more, I used to use um, Joy Luma Shine a lot and stuff for things like that. I use 10 volume to get it to stick a little bit better and last a little longer. This does help it last a little longer than the dedicated processing solution. I do have a few tips, tricks, and behind the chemistry breakdown and tons more on Shades EQ coming in a video. So if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, totally do so and hit the bell so you're notified and do not miss any of my many tutorials that are on the way. I never think, I never know, I'm stuck and left alone. I've been lost. I've been fine, my cause is not defined. Won't you kiss me? Won't you play? So I've been loving Shades EQ's new ABNs. It's such a beautiful ashy brown line. They have a two, a four, and a six. Six is totally my go-to. I have a hard time keeping it in stock. For the paint between, I used the new ABNs and M's, which are the matte line. I did 6ABN, 5N, and 4M. For my root smudge, I'm going in with Shades EQ 4N, 5NA. Let me just say the ashy colors and the cool tones that Shades has. Did you see how that paint between just eliminated that brass in seconds? Shades definitely puts a lot of work into their product and love and care, and you can tell, and I will always support them. When doing a paint between, you always are going to miss pieces between the foils and you can see some orange spots that I did miss. When doing a base color you can apply the color and foil around it. I tend to do paint betweens but that would make a great video so let me know down yonder in the comment section below if you want to see it as well as other video ideas. Nothing is off limits. Leave all the video ideas down below. I'm now posting three times a week and dabbling into vlogs, hauls, miscellaneous. But I'll always do hair videos and I promise you guys that's what my channel started with and that will always be my base. I love mixing colors if you haven't noticed by now. Let me know if you want a video of me showing you my thought process and reason because there is one. I use seven colors on her. 7NB, 7M, 7N, 7T, 7CB, 7GB, and 8CR. Get ready to see the results. You guys, are you seeing this? From overlap color of a level three cherry red to this after a scruples color delete, a bleach wash, and a full baby light that always does the trick. And we did a paint between of everything that was left out. And this is what we're left with. We gave her a really bomb cut. And we actually enhanced the red. We walked, we worked with it, cause she got like a peachy blonde. And that usually happens after overlapping red and like trying to kick through it. So we rocked with it and I did, I think eight colors, it stopped raining. <laughs> so we did eight formulas or seven or something like that. You'll see it on the screen and you also can see it in the description box. Look at that. Her layers were more like stepped layers, very short that she did on her own by doing the upside down cut that was popular on YouTube. And I fixed that. We just dusted her off, evened her out, and I made them lay a little bit more flatter and gave her a lot of texture and movement. Curly hair naturally, you can't just go in with the texturizing um, shears with the teeth. I find if you do that on somebody who has that really natural curly hair, it ends up being a mess because you know it cuts one fourth of the hair and you always get those pieces. Just do point cutting and stuff like that. You heard that? Okay. What was that? The heat coming on? Either that or the wind. Oh, wow. All right, it's getting spooky up in her. We're gonna get out of here. Her mom's outside waiting, but look at that, guys. Look how beautiful. Like, how gorgeous is this? She loves it. This is where her little hair was that she shaved off. That we shadowed in the smudge, and that looks really cute. You always wanna put darkness on, like, short hair like that, like that shadow, because you don't wanna highlight it, because then it looks like breakage. All right, guys, I'm gonna take more pictures. She's gonna take some outside tomorrow in the daylight, and then we'll be able to show you guys 
some pictures at the end of this video. So thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Let me know what videos you want to see down below. I'm posting three times a week now, full time, and I want to give you guys content that you want to see. Until next time, as always, guys, thank you so much for the love and support. I love you all so much from the bottom of my heart. And as always, so long for now. Yeah.